Welcome to the new user primer for Modern Tribe's The Events Calendar. I'm Rob from Modern Tribe, and on behalf of the whole team, I want to thank you for using our plugin. Over the course of a few screencasts in this primer, I'm going to walk you through how to use the plugin. But in this first one, we're going to go to something extremely basic, which is just installing and activating it. If you're a pro user who wants to extend your functionality of the core of the events calendar with features like recurring events and additional views, we'll also install the pro plugin and plug in our license key there. But for anybody who knows how to install and activate a plugin, this is probably going to be familiar territory and you probably don't need to watch the screencast again. That said, if you don't know what you're doing, don't worry, it's really easy. So let's jump into it. I'm assuming by this point that if you are installing just the core of the events calendar, you've downloaded that from the WordPress.org repo and have the zip file easily accessible somewhere on your computer. If you're extending that with the pro add-on, I'm assuming that you have also completed purchasing the pro add-on from the tribe website and have downloaded that zip file to your computer as well. From the dashboard of my site, I'm going to jump into it by going into plugins and into add new, jump into upload, and pick the zip file for the latest version of the events calendar. It doesn't really matter what the zip is named so long as you know it's the most recent version as downloaded from WordPress.org. And when it's plugin installed successfully messages show, I'm ready to know that I can install and excuse me, activate the plugin. When it's activated, I'll get a nice little message saying, welcome to the events calendar. Here's where your calendar lives. Here's how you can change the settings. And I'm set. I'm ready to begin using the core of the events calendar. Notice I now have this events panel over in the sidebar. I can go into create events, etc., and we'll jump into that in separate screencasts. But I could start using it if I was satisfied with just the basic functionality. That said, if I wanted to extend it with Pro, we still have a little bit of work to do. Luckily, it's very similar based on what we just did. Again, we'll come into Plugins Add New, we'll go into Upload, we'll pick the zip file for the Pro release from our desktop, and we will do Install Now. Once again, it'll work for a second, tell us if the plugin was installed successfully, and give us the option to activate. Once I do, it's activated, and what I want to do right now is just go into my list of active plugins and check a couple things. Most importantly, that the plugins match up version-wise. Notice both these show 2.011. On your end, when you're seeing this, by the time you actually are viewing this primer, it's going to be at least version 3.0, but the same rule is going to apply. You want them to be consistent. You also want to make sure that both are active, because if both aren't active, you're not going to get the pro functionality. Without pro, you'll be able to use the core of the events calendar, but if you just have pro active and you don't have the core of the events calendar, you will have no functionality available at your disposal in any sense. You must have at least the core of the events calendar active for anything to work. We know we're in good shape here. We got them both turned on. We've got the consistent version numbers. So I could be in using both in full right now. I don't have a license key plugged in for Pro yet, but it's important to note that that doesn't negate any functionality. I will be able to use the plugin 100% even without a valid license key. There are two areas where I'm gonna fall short though. One of them is with accessing support. I'm not gonna be able to access support without a valid license key in place because the support team on the forums cannot help you if you don't have a valid license key in place. I will also not be able to update my site when new builds are released because the way the plugin works is without a valid key in place, it's not going to prompt you to auto update to the next version of Pro. Sure, if we release a version 3.01 for the events calendar and the events calendar Pro, you will get prompted to update the events calendar via WordPress.org's update engine, but Pro will not prompt you, which means that the plugins are going to start running out of sync real fast, which means you're going to encounter problems real fast. We're not going to be able to help you if you encounter problems running versions that are out of sync. So just make sure that you do have a license key in place so that you can make sure you're accessing the latest in terms of support and new builds, okay? If you purchased it, there's no real reason why you shouldn't plug it in. To do so, I'm going to come into Dashboard, go into Events, and go into Settings. In Settings, I will toggle over to this Licenses tab. And in this Licenses tab, I'm going to see a field for every single premium plugin I've got. If I had Eventbrite tickets as well as the Events Calendar Pro, I'd see two separate license key fields, but obviously Pro is the only premium add-on we've got installed and active at the moment. So that's all I have to plug in a license key for. It's blank because we haven't dropped one in. And in order to acquire the key, I'm gonna go back over to the Tribe website and log in with the credentials I set up during the checkout process. I'll go into Account Central from there, down into License Keys, and I'll find myself an empty and unused Events Calendar Pro license key. Here's one, I know I can use it on one site and there's no site dropped into this site URL field so it's telling me, okay, you have this plugin, you have this license, but it's not used anywhere. So you can go ahead and use this wherever you want to. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna copy the string of numbers, jump back over to the back end of my site, drop that string of numbers in and tab out so it works for a second. And when it finishes working, I should ideally see a valid key message with an expiration date. I wanna make sure that upon saving changes, that valid key message remains and that I don't have any red messages saying things like invalid key, expired key, etc. 
If I see a red message, that's a problem, and it didn't take effect, I'm not going to get access to support, I'm not going to have access to updates, you need to make sure that a green message shows here. And if you want to be really safe, you'll go back over to your license keys page on the Tribe website, you'll refresh that page, and you'll make sure that you are, your URL is now actually popped into that site URL field. Indeed, mine is. It shows localhost because I built this on a local environment, and it's telling me that my license key is plugged in and linked. Let's say that I'm working on localhost to build the site, but I want to move it to a true, legitimate URL once we're finished. Does that mean I'll have to buy a separate pro license because it's already hooked into this localhost site? Absolutely not. You can move a license key from one site to the other without having to take up multiple URLs. And in order to do that, you'll just come over here, hit disconnect now, hit OK on the pop-up that appears, and when it reloads, you should see that localhost has indeed been wiped from that slot, so it's available and empty once again. Only other thing I need to do is come back over here to the back end of my site as well. Delete the key, save changes, and make sure that upon deleting, it no longer appears. Don't see the valid message or anything. I'm in good shape, and at this point, the key is free and ready for use. I would then move it over to my new site, plug it in there the same way that we just saw, and I'd be ready to go. One last thing that you should keep in mind if you're a pro user. Sometimes you'll lose access to your site, you'll have to rebuild a site, etc., and the bottom line is you'll need the plugin again. While you can always download the free version from WordPress.org, sometimes there's confusion as to where you should get the pro version if you need to re-download it. I want to clear that up right now. Back over here on the Tribe website, all I need to do is go into Account Central, which I can access either in the admin bar up top here or over in the sidebar, and I want to go into Downloads. I will have the ability to download any product that I have a currently valid license for. What that means is it'll show me the latest release, It'll tell me the name of the plugin and when it was released, and it'll give me this big blue button to download. For Events Calendar Pro, for example, 2.0.11 is the most recent build. By the time you're watching this, it will be 3.0. All I'd have to do is hit download, and it would save the zip file directly to my desktop, and I can go about installing it. Pretty basic stuff, and for most of you, this is not going to be reinventing the wheel. In Screencast 2, we'll start to see some new, specific to the plugin functionality, and I look forward to seeing you there.